The serious accusations of neglect in a battle over who should be caring for an innocent eight-year-old girl. Now, Danielle and Nick insist their daughter has basically been kidnapped by Danielle's older sister, Kimberly. Take a look. My sister has stolen my child. Because of Kimberly, I have not been able to physically see or hold my daughter in over a year and a half. We had a verbal agreement with Kim for her to take our daughter while we worked to get clean and maintain our sobriety. Once we got clean, my sister was supposed to give me my daughter back, and that did not happen. Since we have lost custody of my daughter, Kimberly has deliberately stood in the way of us spending time with her. Every time Nick and I make plans to see my daughter, she completely crushes it. She'll ignore us or make excuse after excuse, and we never end up getting to see her. Because of Kimberly, I can't call my daughter whenever I want to. Kimberly only allows us to talk to our daughter once a week on Tuesdays, and it's fully supervised. When it comes to my daughter's day-to-day -day life, she completely blocks me out of everything she's involved in. I don't know any of my daughter's teachers. I don't know the school she's attending, what activities she's in. I'm completely out of the loop. Nick and Danielle say, we miss her, we love her. If you miss your daughter, you would go to court and do the proper thing. Where the hell have you been the last year and a half? Hi. Mommy got caught up with her little girlfriends downstairs and left daddy to do all daddy duty. What's even worse, they're living in a homeless shelter with a newborn baby, also born to addiction. We have a roof over our head, food in our belly, and we're getting our family together. They are not even trying to get jobs, they're waiting for the system to take care of them. If my niece went back to live with her parents, who knows what would happen. The way that Kim behaves, it's like she's using our daughter as a pawn in a sick game. Kimberly actually told me that she's keeping my child until she was 18 years old. Over my dead body, that's absolutely not happening. Okay, before I say anything to you two, I'm glad you're here, by the way, so welcome. Um, you've been listening to everything backstage, right? Yes. So you've heard everything that's been said. I'm going to let you respond to every bit of it, all right? Okay. I'm just wanting to be, let me be very clear. I would not have done this story if it wasn't for this child. I'm here for this child and what's in the best interest. If you two got along or didn't get along, you're adults, you could work that out. And right. frankly, I, I wouldn't be here talking to you. Uh, Sorry, but I'll just let you work that out on your own. But there's a child involved, and so that motivates me to be involved. But my question is, let's be commonsensical here. Do you two really think that you're stable enough, established enough, to take this child back? Absolutely. At this point? Absolutely. How about you? Absolutely. Look at, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's think about that word absolutely. It means there's no question there's no doubt in your mind. No doubt in my mind. Okay. In your tape piece, you said, I consider myself to be a great mother, that I made sure that my daughter had a great life. Yes. She was born addicted to drugs. To methadone. Is that being a great mom? No, but it's, a, it's safe by the hospital to have her on the methadone. Nick, you said that Kimberly got custody because you were never given a fair chance. Exactly, yep. How, how is that? Well, basically in the beginning, when we did have the relapse, we had called her on our own and asked her, you know, we need to get on our feet. Obviously, we're not in a good position in our lives and we can own up to it. We're drug addicts right now. When did you call me? Correct. When did you call me? Because you never called me. We I, went, called I got a phone call. No, DCF you didn't. And was well aware of it. When? Because I got notified when I was in New York on vacation with my in-laws. This was in December. Yeah. December of 2017, after 16. I had custody. No, you're such a liar, Nick. No, I never I'm not talked lying. to you. Absolutely. I will not give lying. Dr. Phil show and all so these. There was people never a verbal my agreement. Phone records. There was well, never we a do have agreement. records no. of well, of the court. Let's take a look at the court's decision, and this is guardianship. Yeah. And, yeah. and the, the terms are pretty much interchangeable, but right. they right. use the term guardianship. So this was dated August 21st, 2017. Mm -hmm. Parent one, yeah. Danielle, yeah. after proper notice, did not object to said petition. Mm -hmm. Parent two, Nick, after proper notice, did not object to said petition. There was no proper notice. I went to uh, only one court date in July of 31st and was never notified of the second the court, court date because she never notified me. They couldn't the find me. Was I was in I a program. Talk. Pardon me? I was in a program. The court date was in May 2017. And how come I wasn't notified? And you were on the run. I didn't find you until June. You knew you had a proceeding in the court. It's your burden yeah. to find out when the court dates are.